Hello, this is Langston Key, and this is my project on hex maps. First, why hexagons? It has a really awesome property of all of its neighbors are the same distance away from it across the edge, unlike squares, which always have this weird issue of diagonality that like mess up games all over the place. And I think that's why they're fantastic for games. So many awesome games have used them, and the specific type of game that inspired me to make this was uh, tabletop RPGs and the hex crawl format of play. Uh, I use this tutorial by Jasper Flick of Cat Like Coding that is super extensive and incredibly detailed and explains like why everything is happening. We, we can actually start with a square grid. Um, now these grids are basically just two tries that we create uh, programmatically and then we pop some numbers on them so we can see where they are. Uh, the cool thing about starting with a regular grid is you can visualize where all the hexes are before you actually ever make hexes. Um, and it can be kind of tricky, but it, you can pretty easily position them as if they were hexes, even though they are still squares, um, using some fun uh, geometrical constants that we know about, um, like the ratio of the side length to the width of a hex a hexagon, for example. Next, we use the regular grid uh, and turn it into a hex grid by essentially taking the origin of all of those um, uh, squares that we put and then instead of making uh, two tries that make a square we make a whole lap around a pizza basically and create our uh, hex that way. Uh, now there are more efficient ways as you can see in the bottom uh, left to create a hexagon with triangles however the reason we're doing it this way specifically at like a pizza instead of um, like whatever you'd call that thing is it makes it a lot easier in the future when we want to do things like create mountains and cliffs and and stuff like that the next thing is hexagonal coordinates now these are a really fun and interesting little rabbit hole in and of themselves um, and there's actually many different ways to uh, coordinate a hexagonal grid. Uh, but the way we're going to be doing it is by having cubic coordinates. So actually having an X, Y, and a Z axis. Uh, but some fun properties of th this version of hexagonal coordinates are you can always add every coordinate to get back to zero. The next thing we can do is color blending. So as you can see, the geometry changes a little bit at this step um, after we include some additional geometry. Essentially what we're doing is we are uh, shrinking the pizza a little bit and then adding a bridge in between um, one uh, hex and another hex. And then we have a triangle between all three hexes. And then we'll use these bridges and triangles later to calculate stuff like neighbors and um, do some cool blending between different textures. Next is elevation. Uh, now adding cell elevation seems really tricky um, and it, it actually is for like the more uh, terrace looking pieces. Um, but using cliffs it's actually fairly simple. Essentially we have a elevation data that we store in every every hex uh, and then we move we can move hexes up based on how high they are what their elevation uh, integer is and because we know data about our neighbors we can say oh my neighbor is way up here so i know this vertex is going to have to reach way up um, in the sky x number of units uh, so using the neighbor data and the elevation of hexes we're able to actually just bridge that gap uh, the next piece is terraces, and this is actually way trickier uh, than it seems because on the one hand, actually making a terrace isn't too bad. It's like, okay, if um, elevation is below a certain amount, then instead of just going directly from point A to point B, we're going to go to point C and then make a step and then point um, E and then make a step. It, basically, you can have as many steps as you want. It's just a for loop. That's not too tricky. Uh, the really challenging part is seeing all these edge cases for example if it's a terrace terrace cliff or if it's a cliff cliff um, flat terrace on the other side or something then it gets really tricky because you have to have some um, special cases to handle uh, oh what happens when these two vert vertices touch because you can have a cliff touching a terrace touching a flat land uh, or any combination of that uh, the next thing is water 
and hex waters on hex grids are basically just another hex grid uh, on top of it and what it amounts to is every uh, hex in addition to having elevation data now has weather has a water level data and the water level is just going to sit right above the normal terrain level and essentially all the principles of uh, you know the pizzas and the bridges and the triangles in the middle uh, apply here as well Next is terrain textures. Uh, now there's something really cool called uh, splat mapping, which an example is on the right. All it really is, is just taking two textures and mushing them together somehow. Um, and the mushing together part is kind of the interesting uh, part. Uh, and it's, it's how we know what colors go where. And in this triangle example, you can see the red would be a texture, the blue would be a texture, and the green would be a texture. You can see an example here. You can ignore the river. Uh, I didn't really use rivers, even though it was part of the tutorial. Um, but you can see how they blend together. In those corners, you see all three colors. In the edges, you see two colors. And on the top, you see one color. You can see on the right here how there's different textures. And they're actually... Uh, sampled based on their world position so we know where they are in the world and we just have to figure out how to blend between uh, different textures finally we can use this to actually generate land we can procedurally generate these hex maps using a sort of random search through this uh, or I, actually it's not random at the start as you can see on the blob on the left it's a perfect search you were basically like hey search these cells and every time you come into one color it green and that's how we're making that blob um, but we can also ha add a little bit of jitter a little randomness to the search heuristic every time uh, we ask for it and then that it gets you something on uh, the right here that looks a little more naturalistic, a little more random. Then we can add a water level. Basically, we can just loop through every cell and say, hey, water is at this level and everything above it is above water and everything below it is um, beneath water. And so, yeah, this is a basic cold walk of how everything works. The triangulate method is called on every cell in the entire grid. And the first thing it does is clear out all the meshes that it has. Inside each triangle, or each triangulate uh, method, we see a direction and a cell. And what this means is, okay, I am this hex, and what try of my little pizza am I going to be calculating today? And it takes this direction, let's say, just northeast. So the northeast triangle, and then it goes through all of these checks, like, oh, what's my neighbor? Uh, how high are they? Are they a cliff? Are they a terrace? Are they underwater? All of these checks about what their neighbors are and what this specific direction of this specific hex has to connect to and then it figures out where its vertices need to be to make it look normal. The map generation on the other hand is essentially taking all of that data about the hexes and um, after it's generated like a flat like blank plane adding more and more on top of it to make it look um, like a terrain. There is so much to learn and I this tutorial was really amazing and it covered so much I didn't even talk about here. Um, but mostly I, I figured out what meshes are and how they work. Like everyone has an understanding of what meshes are, what tries are. They've opened a blender before. Why their order matters, like why the order of vertices matter um, and how UVs are mapped onto vertices, all the cool stuff like that. Um, I also had more experience making custom structs and data types and constructors. So basically things that Unity doesn't have that we could really use for our specific use case that we can just make, um, which was pretty cool. And finally, apparently you can do this with a for loop. <laughs> so where do we go from here? Uh, there's tons of uses for hex maps. Originally, I wanted to use this as a tabletop RPG tool. And then I think it'd be cool to add more uh, Procton algorithms to this specific uh, hex map generation. But that is the conclusion of my project. I hope you guys have a great day.